Today on Free Field Training, we're taking a look at the Pelican 8060. The 8060 is what a six-year-old would draw and design if you told them, make a police flashlight. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. The 8060 has great output. It can shine at, as you can see, these three trees here, 15, 25, and about 35 yards. You point it down the block, 80, 90 yards down across the street. You could easily identify a person with the beam coming out of this. And there is plenty of flood in the area right near the light in order for you to do our generalized tasks very well with this light. It cradle charges, which is of course my preference, and it has an enormous runtime, literally hours of runtime. I had to use a whole bunch of video to try to get just the first overheat step down on this light. And it took so long, I doubt anybody is actually going to get to that overheat shutdown unless they're out looking for a missing kid in the middle of a field for over 45 minutes. It does all the things that you'd want a flashlight to do. The downside though is it's enormous. The thing is so large that I had to break out the old duty belt ring to slide this puppy into to carry it around during my testing. Pelican sent this to me to ask for my opinion on it and to tell you guys about it if I thought it was a good police light, which I think it is, but it is important to note the overall size of this thing. Now I'm gonna take you down to the tabletop and we're gonna talk specifics. The 8060 here is exactly what you would expect from a police duty light. It is fairly large, it's all polymer. I know some of this looks metal, but it's not. This is all polymer. Uh, the end cap, if you unscrew it here, you can see the size of the battery. This is why you get almost five hours at full output on one charge of this battery. It is also dual fuel, which means that if you manage to run this so long, or more likely forget to charge it because you've been using it for months on end without charging the thing, or you forget the charger at home, you can actually load this with C batteries and it will run just like it does off the recharge, which is really, really nice. C batteries widely available at your Walgreens and truck stops and gas stations at three o'clock in the morning. You can pretty much always find them because nobody uses C batteries for almost anything else anymore. The reflector is enormous on here. As you can see, here's what most people would consider a large police duty light, a streamlight stinger. And you can see how big the light head is on that in comparison. Here's it against the Olight Warrior X. And here it is against a small police duty light. This is the ASP T series, the ASP T1. The Pelican 8060 is an LED. The specs, we'll throw them up on screen, over a thousand lumens, and it's really more important what that thousand lumens gets you. Companies can play games with the lumen counts, but when you see what it can do, it's actually pretty impressive, especially at that thousand lumen output. A lot of it has to do with that large light head that allows them to do more with less, especially when it comes to throw. It is fairly heavy. Uh, it's noticeably heavier than other options, although when you put it head to head with some of the other large police duty lights, the weight isn't the first thing that strikes you, it's the size. It's made of a slick polymer, but it has these deep, deep checkered grooves in it, which makes it very easy to hold onto. And there's an enormous heat sink in here, which has a lot to do with that output over time that we pointed out. Function's pretty simple, throw it on the cradle to charge it. Uh, when it's charging, the lights flash red. When it's completely done, they stop, they turn green. The button on here, this is the only UI. You basically just tap it until you get what you want. So straight out of the box, the first press is high. If you double tap, you get strobe. If you triple tap, you get medium. And if you quad tap, you get low mode. 
Now there's other options that you can use. My preference is actually the high and the low, because it's the only two things that I'm really gonna use. In that mode, what you get is you push the button the first time, you get high, and in order to get low mode, you have to double tap it to get low. This means that when I pull the flashlight out and turn it on, I immediately get all of the lumens and all of the candela I can. And then if I want a mode that's gonna be for looking at our car seat, searching around, doing little utility tasks, I can just double tap the button and get low mode. The rest of the stuff is of limited usefulness really to me. The only time I use medium mode for anything is when I've overheated the light from having it on high. So being able to select that isn't a really big thing for me, especially when with a light with this much battery power in it. Medium mode I would normally use just to conserve battery, but I don't see any reason to conserve battery when you can get almost five hours of high output. If you're watching this video to try to see how to change out the output because you read the instructions and you didn't understand what it was, I'll go through that really quick for you. To bring it right back to the initial output of high, strobe, medium, low, you push the button eight times and on the last push, you don't click it, you just momentary on the button eight times and on the last push, you push it all the way down until the light flashes. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you get that flash, and that means that it is now set to the original setting, which is high, strobe, medium, low. If you wanna go straight to high and low, you do the same thing, but you click 16 times. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And how you're gonna get all sorts of flashes, that's your confirmation, and when it stops, it's now set back to high and low. And now I'm back at the original setting. People are of course gonna ask about this being an emergency impact weapon. I did a whole video on using other large C or D cell mag lights as an emergency impact weapon. I guess you could. However, I would warn you that this tail cap on here is also polymer. So if you did that, it would have to be enough of an emergency where you wouldn't mind cracking the polymer end cap on this. I'm sure it's not a problem for dropping it on the ground. I drop this on the ground quite a bit, just walking around with it, but it is gonna be a problem if you start uh, cracking things with the end of this. This is definitely not what you're gonna to want to hit a window with if that's what you're thinking by seeing this. So that's the Pelican 8060. It is not just a police duty light, it is the police duty light, like the quintessential police duty light that people would think of when they think police flashlight. And in that regard, I think it does a good job of the task it was designed to do. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, put them down in the comment section down below. There's also going to be an Amazon affiliate link for this down below. If you like this video, if it helped you out and you're gonna buy this, if you use that link, I make a little bit of money and it allows me to continue making videos like this that hopefully entertain and inform you a little bit about the lights. Uh, until next week, you guys be safe. Take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. And while you're here, why don't you check out some of these other goofy videos that I've made. Or you could subscribe or maybe go over to Patreon and see how you can get your name put on the videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are, of course, down in the description. We'll see you guys next time.